Goodbye to Supermassive. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we pulled a quick analyst swap here. I've got to welcome Spawn and Jat to the desk. Jat representing NA, Spawn replacing EU, who is out of the tournament, so Crepo decided to... <laughs> <laughs> is that really the logic? <laughs> not really. It's not at all the logic. But we just pulled a quick swap. And uh, in terms of this game here for Flash Wolves, they, they pick up the win, which will tie them uh, record-wise with CLG, but because of the head-to-head, -head, they're now sitting one spot below CLG. However, I think most importantly, this win didn't come as easy as Flash Wolves probably would have liked it to come going into the bracket stages. Yeah, there was this one misstep in the mid-team fight, and I feel like uh, overall, they just reacted on the Tristana pick, last pick, pretty well. And this is this is what I think they're trying to do. They're relaxing a bit. They don't want to show their hand, and they just want to find some picks for NL. That's pretty much it. See, I actually thought the Tristana pick, I'm on Deficio's side here. I actually uh -huh. thought they a bit. I thought that was a great pick for uh, NL. His positioning was much better on a Tristana. His resets, uh, he obviously has a pretty good <laughs> understanding of uh, the champion. Uh, there was a couple of slips, and I, I think that's the important thing here, right, is that Flash Wolves, whether it was just uh, taking it easy, as we're saying, or whether, you know, they are making these small decision-making and mechanical errors, they still are there a little bit, and I think they will enjoy the four days off to kind of tighten that up. Yeah, I think it was a relatively scary game for Flash Wolves. I thought, at least in the draft phase, that if they weren't able to snowball the victory, the team fight composition of Supermassive would take them down, but even then when they did slip up a little bit and the game was close, they showed superior execution down the stretch. They were able to reset up the split push and get the picks that were necessary and ultimately kind of make up for the fact that they couldn't actually make the mistake because they're a better team. Right, absolutely. Uh, Kobe would have been happy to have seen some champion diversity. He's no longer on the desk to talk he about it. He was unhappy about only seeing the same champions over that's and over? What, yeah, yeah, that's what he was saying at the beginning. He's like, oh, enough of the Azir and the Rise and the this <laughs> and the that. No, no, no. We got Vayne and Tristana, man. So. We got Vayne yeah. and Tristana. But, okay, so okay, let's talk about the merits of Tristana a little bit more. Since you said you agreed with the Fischio about maybe showing the hand a little bit, you know, in one, in one case you're saying, hey, NL can play another champion. On the other hand, this now isn't going to surprise anyone in the bracket stage if you pull it out. Well, a couple of things. I actually think that as far as kill lanes go, Tristan is the best. So if you are going to play Soraka and you can find standard 2v2 lanes, you can kill a Soraka with a Tristana. I mean, the jump reset is incredibly potent because of Satchel Charge. Uh, she sets up ganks for junglers relatively well with a slow as well, and Braum really is the ideal support to pull her with in that regard. So I think that's a legit bottom lane. Is it a risky bottom lane? Sure. But against passive bottom lanes, you can use a pick like this to snowball it. I just think that the Tristana pick didn't really fit their comp that well, and it's not a champion that we actually see NL play much of. This season, no Tristana at all. So I really think it's a reactive pick, and they've never really gone 4-1 much, this Flash Wolves team, so maybe they surprise me, but I'm, I'm leaning toward reaction, actually. I mean, CLG of all teams, which is the team that they are most like I hesitate to say most likely just because <laughs> I don't want to jinx right. the tiebreaker scenarios at the end of the day. But CLG, yeah. the one other team that we know is willing to play Tristana. They can play Tristana. They play it a little bit differently, obviously. We saw the Infinity Edge as the first item. So Tristana has always been a champion that has a good start and then a dip and then back up at the end. So mm -hmm. when Trist does the Rage Blade build, it technically lessens the dip or maybe some would the theorize it gives it a little bit of a spike, but for a later late game payoff. I'm mainly worried about this because I remember back in the time when North America was going to get a good seed in the bracket stage. It was called the 2014 World Championships. Uh -huh. And then SK Gaming beat TSM, and then they got seeded against Samsung White, who was the best team in the tournament <laughs> right. right after that. So G2 can definitely still get some some attitude into this tournament, even if they're actually eliminated from the bracket stage right now. All right, so then let's let's kind of look ahead to those two matchups just real briefly. G2 against CLG1. That's piece number one that has to fall into place. But on top of that, SKT has to beat RNG in order to force that three-way tiebreaker in which all hell can break loose. Yeah, certainly can. And, you know, uh, looking at how SKT has tightened up their game uh, stylistically, G2 and SKT, in my opinion, were the two hardest matchups for RNG to win because I think that they make a lot of proactive players and SKT generally play a good reactive League of Legends. So I think that even though RNG have had a terrific tournament so far, this is still stylistically one of those matchups that RNG will take very careful note of how SKT are playing the map. And when it comes to G2 CLG, I mean, it... Yep. Everyone would, at this point, very comfortably call CLG a favorite, right, Absolutely. in that matchup. But that doesn't mean yep. that something can't go horribly wrong in the early game and, and, and cause this game to swing the other way. CLG is definitely the favorite. They've beaten everyone in this tournament. They've beaten Flash Wolves twice, and their confidence has been increasing as the event goes on. When I talk to Zeeks about what they've learned from their 
past international fairs, which was the World Championship and also IM Katowice, it's that they were playing scared and they were lacking confidence to make plays. Hmm. They have all of that confidence now. That's what they gained when they beat every team, which is, I think, one of the big reasons they were able to beat Flash Wolves in one of their most convincing wins of the tournament. Yeah, but let's not forget, they also lost to Supermassive. So, you know, there are two sides to CLG, and I Absolutely. hope the good side comes out, but, you know, anything could happen in League of Legends. You along with the rest of North mm -hmm. America. Well, we are gearing up for Game 5, where North America's Counter Logic Gaming will take on the EU LCS's G2 Esports. Stay right there. We'll be back in just a few minutes. So we are onto the rift. So, super massive. So, it'll come back to us for intro. Yeah, we'll probably a pretty brief intro. We'll try and get... Final match of MSI 2016. He's going to land onto Thaldron. Snared up. Parallel convergence down. He does use the Chrono Break. Casa might be in trouble as collateral damage. Unable to make it work. There's Naru just gets exploded. Looks for it as well. He's underneath the enemy turret, but Supermassive needs to try and do something. Thaldron's gonna fall down as well. And Flash Wolves, this is all about them. There's the reset. Flash Wolves, 35 minutes into the game. Grab the cheeky Baron, and then the victory. The Tristana for the first time, and NL makes it look easy.